Hey guys, welcome back to another RC workshop and once again we're going to be looking at my Armour Typhon 6S Speed Buggy. Now in the last RC workshop for this car you saw me um, work on my rear shocks and today we're going to be looking at the centre drive line of my Armour Typhon. Now um, for you guys that don't know I've had this car for nearly a year and it's been run really hard during that year. If I just turn the buggy like this you can see that it's been run extensively. Most of it has been on road, um, jumping at skate parks, landing very badly, you know, full power launches, etc. And you're going to expect whatever buggy it is, whatever car it is, you're going to expect some sort of wear, um, even maybe breakages. Now, I actually haven't broken anything in the drive line on this car, but there is some parts that have been subs, uh, substance to wear and tear, most of which are, is the parts we're going to replace today. Now, I've got three packets and this is all I actually need to keep this car going for another year. So the first off is the long um, centre dog bone which is part code AR310472 and it's 116 millimetres long, which is this one. Then you've got this one, which is AR310470, which is the 82mm dog bone. And then I have um, still, uh, still diff out drives, which is AR310439. And there you go. Now, the quick query I'm going to answer about these diff cups is the relation to the DEX-8 from Team Durango. Now, as some of you guys may know, the Team Durango and the armor vehicles in the Ape Scale lineup are very similar in their comp uh, composition, their design. And same can be said for the differentials. The differentials are actually very similar. Um, they're just made out of different materials, uh, very slight different materials, um, but the actual design is the same. Now I queried some people over at Armour about if the DEX8 diff cups would work on this car. Um, because some of you guys know the centre differential for those DEX vehicles. Um, are actually, the centre diff is actually a completely different design to the ones found on the Armour vehicles because of how they've got the spacing for the centre diff. But the front and rear differentials on the DEX8 is exactly the same. They just use hardened um, out drives. And because the centre diff on this vehicle is pretty much the same build as the front and rear diffs, the actual differential cups for the DEX8 will work in the centre differential as well as the front and rears, which um, is an actual upgrade. However, I queried them about this and they said yes, it will work. But it won't actually improve the wear, which I found quite odd, but it doesn't actually improve the wear. They're lighter and they're stiffer, but they don't actually um, improve in wear. So what I mean by that is, even this time next year, even if I did use the DEX8 diff cups, I would still have pretty much the exact same outcome they would need replacing. So that is a given, it's up to you which one you choose, I decided just to go with the armour ones because I could actually find them online, the DEX8 ones I couldn't find yet, but I just thought I'd share that with you guys, the DEX8 diff cups will work in the Typhon diffs, same can be said for the DEX8T or the DEX8, the diff cups will work with the Talion, the, Arm, uh, the Creighton, uh, even the Sentin probably, so it the, if you're looking for upgrades for your armor vehicles, look at the Team Durangle vehicles. This is basically the story. Um, just double check the work. You know, look through your instruction manuals. Look through the exploded diagram views. Contact Team Durango Armor. See what they say. And nine times out of ten, they will probably fit. So, enough yapping. Um, let's actually get on with some work. So. Me popping off the body shell. I actually have done some cleaning to this vehicle. I don't know if you can really see it, but uh, I have done quite a lot of cleaning to it. So I'll just pop the shell off and bring the buggy up to you guys. Now, as you can see down in there, 
you can definitely see some different signs of wear just here. You can see the play that's going on there. And the same is at the front, but not so much. You can see there. There's still some play. Um, so what I'm going to do is obviously replace these dog bones and replace the diff cups in the diff, obviously. I'm also going to refill the diff. What am I going to refill it with? I'm going to refill it with 5,000 consistency CST oil, not weight. Um, weight is a different me measurement to CST. I explained this in my last video of, of this car when I was doing the shocks. CST is an actual fixed measurement for oil um, consistency, thickness. Um, weight, um, which is quite, which is chucked about in the RC industry, weight is a measurement of oil thickness that is made up by an individual manufacturer. So, Team Associated 30 weight would not match the consistency of Schumacher 30 weight. There, it will be a very, they'll be different. They're not very consistent. To the average RCM like me, you're probably not going to tell, but to the racer you're going to want to keep your brand of oil the same so you get the same outcome every time but consistency is same from brand to brand because it's a fixed um, value it's a fixed measurement like centimeters it's not a made up uh, measurement whereas weight is uh, so that is my tip <laughs> for looking at oils I know quite a lot of people get confused and say what's 30 weight equivalent to in CST you can't really do that because weight is a made up figure, it's not a thing you can compare, um, you, it's completely made up. You have to stick to one brand if you like their oils because you, if you go and change you're going to find it's going to be different, ever so slightly different but it will be different. So yeah I'm going to rebuild, well not rebuild, actually yeah you can say I'm going to rebuild the centre diff in the car as well. So change the diff cups, do the dog bones, and change the oil. That's going to be what's going to happen in this video. So, it's time for the speeder. But, before I do that, I'm obviously going to bring you in closer to have a better look of what I'm doing. Alright guys, now I've got you in closer. Um, I'm going to basically start working on the buggy. So, I will be speeding up certain parts of this. I'll probably speed up this next section. Um, but you'll get to see everything I'm doing, so it shouldn't be too difficult to follow along. Obviously, I'll follow up after. Alright guys, I've just taken out the five bottom screws. Um, I've just removed the five screws from the bottom of the chassis that you need to take this whole centre assembly out. Now once you do that, obviously, you get this huge clump out and you also are able to remove the two centre dog bones, like so. Now, you're done with the chassis up to this point, so just roll it away and we're going to concentrate on these. So, first off, I'm going to open up my new dog bones. Now, I'm going to show you why I've replaced, I'm going to replace these dog bones today. So this is the longer one, this is the 116mm one, which is the front, and this is the old, this is the new. And I don't know if you're going to be able to tell here, if I bring them to here, I'll get the thing to focus, there you go. You can see there is a definite difference, old, new. You can see there's a definite wear difference. And the other side is even more significant, as you can see. Now this has happened after a year, a full, a, pretty much a full year of running, which is actually really good. Most would be broke by now, but it's it's held on in there. I mean, it's very close to its end of its lifespan, but it's still holding on. So that's the old one. We can put that back and we'll move on to the rear one. Now the rear of any a rear of any car is going to be substance to more wear and tear just due to the nature of the cars. When you're under acceleration, the rear gets more torque to put to it because the front just bleeds all out. The rear has to gain traction. So this is what's going on here. 
So this is new, this is old, and you can see there there's a definite difference. Moving on to backside, and once again you can see there's a definite difference there. So new, old. So now we've got the two new dog bones away. I can now break into this assembly, which is actually very easy to do. All you've got to do, you remove this top um, gear cover protector thing, whatever it is, stamped with the armor logo. Just four screws. Easy takes this apart, like so. There's the four screws removed. That piece just comes off, put that to the side, and then the diff comes off. The motor mount and the motor come off in one piece. Set it off to the side, take off the standoff, put that to the side, and we have the center diff, like so. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to speed up this section because it's actually going to be pretty lengthy. I'm going to disassemble this, clean it all out, etc. We're putting the new diff uh, cups and report back. I've just stopped the um, speed up here and I've just cracked open the centre diff. Now I actually have cracked open this before and put in my own oil, but as you can see, it's a very gunky, disgusting looking diff in there. So as you can see. And spin this one. As you can see it's a very gunky differential. So what I'm actually probably going to do here now is actually stop the footage altogether. Um, I'm going to go over to a sink and clean all this out and then come back, speed up the footage and put all the dif differential back together again. So I'll catch you in the next cut. Alright guys, I'm back now and as you can see in this little pot I've got my differential and I've actually managed to clean up pretty well. Um, it took me quite a while, but um, it's because it was very heavy diff oil I put in there. It's just the stuff I had laying about, so it was very gunky. So now we're going to start actually rebuilding the center diff. So these are the old drive cups. Now I bring out my new steel drive cups. these are the new ones here you will be able to see a significant difference there you can see a definite difference there you can see where it's just been chipped away spin it around again you can see there's a definite difference see some wear there but yeah old ones in away and to the new ones. So my new diff cups, um, my spur gear there. So what I'm gonna do actually yeah let's do that. Let's slide in the bearings. Right so while I'm doing this guys I'm gonna speed this bit up because I'm gonna start muttering to myself so I'm gonna speed this up um, obviously you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So Hold on for another speed up. Guys, now I've filled this center diff with oil. Uh, well, I haven't fully completed the process of filling the, diff, the center diff with oil because, as you can see, it's a very thick oil and it needs some time to settle. And once it's settled down, um, I'm going to input more oil in there and then seal it up. But um, just to report on what I found when I took the diff apart. There was no broken parts at all in there, the diff, the pins, the gears, there was nothing wrong, it's a very solid built diff. 
Um, seems it seems to be very thought out. Um, how Armour have done their cars, it seems to be very thought out. Uh, just put some, introduce some more oil. Yeah, the differentials seem to be well thought out. Um, you do have shims each side of the spider gears. Um, just make sure you um, remember to put them in, otherwise you're going to probably lead to some stripped up gears. But now this diff I think is ready to be put back together again. So what I'm going to do, place the main gear on top. And put the screws in like so. Just place them in. And just do it. So one tip is when you you're doing your differentials, try and do this uh, tighten the screws up in a star shape or across from each other. Then that way it gives a equal pressure to the diff. Just make sure it's all geared up right. Yep. Um, also, don't fully tighten the gear uh, the screws down 100%. When you're first doing this, um, just so you, you allow the main gear to have some wiggle room to put the other two screws in. So just quickly put, oh, put these in. Okay, guys. So now that's all tightened up, I can move that tissue off to the side, move my tools off, and there you go. So working the diff, it feels relatively actually pretty smooth um, just allow the oil to break in so now that's all done um, just a quick um, word of advice the stock oil in the center diffs for the armor vehicles I think I believe is 10,000 weight so I've upped it to 50,000 weight so weight I keep saying weight it's consistency uh, 10,000 consistency is the stock I've now put in 50,000 consistency so 40,000 increase um, some people have put in 100,000, uh, I can see that be necessary for 6S running but I mainly run on 4S so I've only stuck to 50,000 but other than that it's you know you choose what you want to do with diff oils so what I'm going to do the gear mesh is already set so I can just place this back in again and then actually what I'm going to do I'm going to clean that stand off up oh, this is a little bit oily speed this bit up for you guys all right guys I've gone ahead and reassembled the whole thing the uh, motor and motor mount is in the center diff has all been rebuilt um, and your dog bones are in, all nice and snug. If I just roll it like that, there you go. You can see there's a definite difference from now to the start of the video. You can definitely see there's no lash there now, as you can see. There. There. And um, it just, there just seems to be a lot less play from when I push it to actually move it. So I'm going to reset the gear mesh because it does sound a little bit off to me but that's pretty much it for this video guys so I'm just going to back out and um, you know rearrange the camera so you get a better view. Alright guys so I rearrange the camera. The buggy is all ready, I'm going to put the, uh, the body on, I'm going to get some batteries charged up and take this baby back out again. Um, it's been a while, uh, it's been down for a couple of weeks, uh, mainly due to the shocks, so I couldn't really run it. But that is pretty much it, guys. Um, Typhoon is back up and running. Um, I am thinking about investing in some 5S packs to run in this thing, so look forward to maybe that in the future. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So I hope you liked um, the video. Um, we just went today. We just went over rebuilding the center diff and putting some new parts in. Again, nothing broke. Just the fact some wear and tear over the year I've had the car. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. 
if you like this video please hit the like button if you're new around here and you like the videos on my channel please go ahead and hit the subscribe button grow to the community of already um gathered or um already yeah already gathered today and yeah if you want more rc for me go ahead and go to my instagram page it's bash of radio control my youtube channel name you'll find some behind the scenes uh, video clips shot uh, photos you know new stuff that comes in that i may not show on camera first and yeah that's pretty much it for this video guys so um, i hope you all enjoyed thank you very much for watching and i hope to see you all in my next video